What's good? Brian Tong here and welcome to the Apple Bits for everything good and bad inside the world of Apple. And hey, let's just jump into it because the latest news coming from Bloomberg's Mark Gurman says that Apple is already working on their third generation of silicon, which would be an M3 chip for future Macs and iPads. Yeah, that's right. The M3 is coming in. We haven't even seen the M2 yet. Now, in his latest Power On newsletter, he reiterates that Apple is still working on several computers with the M2 chip, and they could come as early as June. We're expecting an M2 chip for a new MacBook Air and an entry-level MacBook Pro and a new Mac Mini, M2 Pro and M2 Max chips for a new 14 and 16-inch MacBook Pro lineup, and a dual M2 Ultra chip for the Mac Pro. But um, what about this M3 chip? Well, he says the M3 iMac is coming, and is already in the works, but it probably won't launch until the end of next year at the earliest. And I know right now is someone out there screaming like, what about the iMac Pro? You know, German still believes it's coming, but it's not going to be anytime soon. And for all of you who feared Apple killed the iMac Pro, they didn't really kill kill it, uh, but it's out there. So with their 24 inch iMac and Mac Studio, look, you know, they're looking at the data and it's telling them that there maybe isn't enough demand for an iMac Pro right now based on how people are buying. And the other thing that stands out here is that Apple might be just skipping the M2 and jumping straight to the M3 for the iMac. That is two years after the all new M1 24 inch iMac debuted, if it holds true. Or you look at this another way, that M3 iMac is the iMac Pro coming in 2023. Now, yes, this is still a little bit of speculation, but what we do know from this report is that an M3 iMac is in the works and could be coming by the end of next year. Now also in the Bloomberg report, it says that the Apple Watch could get satellite connectivity in a future model. Remember, it was last year when rumors started popping up that the iPhone 13 was potentially getting satellite service to use specifically for emergencies or to send short text messages to emergency contacts when out of cellular service range. Well, Mark Gurman now says that the feature is also destined to be coming to the Apple Watch. So. It's like Thanos. Destiny arrives all the same. And now it's here. Or should I say, I am. Except that didn't work out that good for him. Actually, no, it wasn't good. Like, not too good at all. It, it was bad. Now, German says Apple's time frame could be this year or 2023. We've heard Apple could be putting out three new Apple Watch models in 2022. There's expected to be a regular model, an SE model, and maybe this rugged sports model. How about at least one or two of these models get potentially this satellite feature? I think if anything that really makes the Apple Watch slightly different hardware wise, that's what's really needed until it's able to bring the blood pressure and blood glucose sensors that everyone is hoping for. It's likely that it's not, but maybe we will see satellite connectivity this year. It seems weird that it'd be in the Apple Watch before the phone. Maybe it's both, um, but we will wait to see. And a quick note about the Apple Watch Series 6. Apple recently announced a new service program for some Series 6 Apple Watches that were affected by a white screen issue. Now, a small percentage of Series 6 40 millimeter Apple Watch users have an issue where the display can turn blank permanently. So if this is you, you can go to Apple's website to see if your Apple Watch is eligible for repair. Now, the affected devices were manufactured between April and September of 2021. All right, let's take a moment to thank the sponsor of this video, Tovala. Tovala is the first smart oven paired subscription meal service. It makes any meal from breakfast to lunch and dinner. Prepping the meal takes under a minute, like this butter steak with four cheese risotto that I put together like a master chef. All the food is prepped, so I just had to do a couple of things before cooking. Then I put the trays in the oven, I scan the QR code, press start, and voila, it starts cooking. The Tavala Smart Oven cooks your meals in 20 minutes or less using each meal's unique cooking cycle with modes of steam, bake, and broil. Now, look, I'm extremely busy and this is the most convenient meal service that I've ever used and it saves me time. The Tavala Smart Oven can also be used to cook your own favorite foods with the manual functions of steam, bake, broil, toast, and reheats. Tavala even provides you with a library of recipes in their app to get you started. So. I tried their salmon recipe with salmon that I bought on my own, and it was the softest salmon that I have ever had. Hey, do you like blackened shrimp tacos? Well, it's one of my picks from Tavala's meals as well. Now, these meals are fast to make and full of flavor, and it's legit changed how I eat during the week. So check out the link below and in the description to make your first meal with the Tavala Smart Oven. All right, back to the stories, and we've got to talk about the iPhone 14 and 14 Pro because if the rumors are true, Apple must be watching my videos, which I actually know they are, but 
A rumor claims Apple will bring an all new purple color and a new dual tone flash to the iPhone 14 and 14 Pro lineup. Look, we've already seen a purple iPhone on the iPhone 12, but this time it could be coming during the launch for the 14 and the 14 Pro. Now the rumor says the 14 will come in black, white, blue, red, and purple, while the 14 Pro lineup will come in graphite, gold, and silver, and purple with that metallic finish that changes depending on how the light hits it. Uh, yes, please. You know, I'm all about that purple, like if you didn't notice, oh, maybe I just happen to be wearing a purple bracelet with a purple background and a purple shirt. Yeah, you know, I'm all about that purple life. Like, they'd be smart to also match it with that iPad mini purple. That's nice too. The post also claims we'll see a new dual tone flash that looks like a small circle inside of a big circle instead of two LEDs like sandwiched next to each other, but we haven't seen any evidence that supports this yet. And I don't really care about that because what I really care about is a purple iPhone Pro. Like they might not be doing much with the 14 Pro this year at all, but if it comes in purple, <laughs> that's an easy sell for a simp like me. Cause ain't no shame in my purple game. And if you wanna be excited, but not really, because does it really even matter anymore? A report from Inchi Quo says Apple could launch its very first full screen iPhone in 2024 with the iPhone 16 Pro. Um, we don't even have the 14 here yet, and there are reports on the 16 Pro. Now, it would potentially be the first Apple device to have an under-display Face ID sensor and an under-the-display camera as well, like the Galaxy Z Fold 3 did last year. It would look nice. I mean, there would be no notch, and that was one of my life goals that would finally be achieved six years after the iPhone 10. But I don't know. I'm, I'm more juiced about a purple iPhone than an all-screen iPhone three years from now. If it's true, we're expecting to get halfway there this year with the iPhone 14 Pros reportedly getting rid of the notch for the punch hole and the pill hole combo. And then the next step, no holes in 2024, even if other phones are already there. And look, I swear I'm not jaded. Like I'm kind of feeling like whoopee, but well, how are you feeling about this? Like, am I wrong? Or do you feel the same way as I do? Like all the excitement to me is in the max space right now for the Apple you know, ecosystem and world and the iPhone, this thing is still incredible. Like I can do everything on it in my pocket, but those type of like three year rumor stories and then people use it like as a headline, they just don't blow me away anymore. Me, yeah, I don't know. Well, hey, we'll talk about it in depth in three more years. Mm -hmm. Okay, but if anyone knows what they're doing with the iPhone, come on now, it's Apple. A new report by the Consumer Intelligence Research Partners shows that the iPhone 13 lineup is bringing some of the best results it ever has the iPhone 13, 13 Pro, 13 Pro Max, and 13 Mini accounted for almost three quarters of iPhone sales in the March quarter. Now the chart shows the growing diversity of models from 2020 to 2022, but the 12 Mini and the 13 Mini account for as little as 3% of all sales. And that's probably why they're discontinuing them this year. The iPhone 13 had the largest share for a single iPhone model with 38% of all iPhones sold. And if you wanna talk about older phones, check this out, the two-year-old, iPhone 11, iPhone SE from 2020, and the three-year-old iPhone XR combined, they accounted for 15% of all sales this quarter. That's right, like the tech YouTuber world just got shook after hearing people are still buying the iPhone 11 and not upgrading to the latest phone every single year when a new one comes out. W wait, that's not what most people do? And you know, I know there's plenty of you that hold onto your phone for two or three years or even more, so are you ready? to make the upgrade this year. And what phone are you using right now? Hey, you can tell me in the comments and it's gonna be our little secret just between you and me and tens of thousands of other people. All right, that's gonna do it for this video. If you like what you see, give me that thumbs up, thumbs up and hit that notification bell ding, to get all my latest videos when they drop. And if you want more of that Apple goodness, you can check out my weekly Apple Bits XL audio podcast to get the latest deep dive with all these stories and new ones every week with special guests Take care and be safe and I'll see you on the next one. Peace and love.